Here in the High Temperature Corrosion Lab, I work with my PI, Dr. Brian Gleason, on how to understand, control, and prevent the most perversive enemy of all metal products, oxidation. Metal products are everywhere. They basically sustain our civilization. From the structure of the planes we fly, to the turbines that we need to generate power, up to the pipelines that run our gas, everything is made out of metal. However, making metal is not an easy task. Here in Pennsylvania, our industry partner, ATI, runs one of the greatest and most powerful metal production facilities in the world. Metal production uses high temperature heat treatments to provide the right mechanical properties. However, when you heat up a metal in the presence of air, even super alloys get oxidized. Oxides can affect the performance of the material as well as the equipment used to shape the material into components. Therefore, in order to remove these oxides, we use blasting and pickling strong acids. Optimizing this process will allow the production of cleaner products in a more efficient way, saving cost and time. Here is a schematic of the last processing step in the coil metal production. The finishing line receives a cold metal covering black looking oxide. The coil then goes through an annealing heat treatment to provide the final desired mechanical properties and then is subsequently blasted and pickled in acids to try to remove the oxide. However, sometimes even after blasting and pickling, the end product has an undesired green tint. To solve this problem, process engineers often rerun the coil product a second time with annealing furnace off and no blasting to obtain the desired clean gray surface. An alloy that suffers from this green coloration is the ATI 6 to Ferry. This is a nickel based super alloy solution strengthened with chromium and tungsten and used for high temperature applications. The green coloration does not affect the mechanical properties of the alloy, as shown here in the table. However, the green tint is aesthetically non pleasing for customers, but perhaps more importantly, it affects the equipment used in the shop that transports the coil. Therefore, our goal with this project has been to envision a processing solution that will remove the green coloration without adding any extra processing steps. To this end, we envision three major objectives. First, we need to identify what type of oxide products yield this green coloring and when does in the process form. Second, we need to evaluate the rate at which these pickling acids can remove the oxide. And lastly, we want to optimize the processing parameters so to yield a clean, oxide-free coil product. For the first objective, we retreat samples in all three conditions, black, green, and gray. With a combination of energy dispersing spectroscopy, EDS, and XRD, we can identify that the black scale consists of a mix of nickel iron chrome oxides accompanied with nickel tungstate. For the green sample, we evidence that the oxide in question corresponds simple to chromium oxide or chromia of about 1 and 2 microns in thickness. And lastly, the gray sample corresponds to simply the clean glare alloy, as you can observe by comparing the gray and blue patterns in the chart. Having identified the green tint as chromia, the question now is, where in the finishing line does it form? The most obvious step is to look at the coal after it has been exposed to the annealing step, and this is indeed what we experimentally tested. Here is an image of the microstructure of the alloy just after the annealing exposure. You can clearly see the dual layer structure. Both our chemical analysis and XRD clearly indicate the presence of the black oxide rich in iron on the top with a chromium scale group that grew underneath. Since we now know that chromium oxide is responsible for this green coloration, we can estimate how fast this oxide grows as a function of temperature by consulting literature, as shown here in the graph. Having mapped out the oxide evolution, we now move to the second objective, which is to evaluate the efficiency of the pickling step at removing the oxide. Blasting is done to basically crack and mechanically condition the oxide scale, while the acids then react and remove the entirety of the oxide scale. The temperature and acidity of the pickling step are pretty much fixed by the materials used in the line production, so truly only time is a variable, and so this is what we tested. Knowing the initial thickness of the oxide scale before it enters into the pickling bath, we then evaluate how much oxide gets removed as a function of time, which effectively allows to calculate a pickling removal rate. With this information, we can then move to the last step of optimizing parameters. We now know the rate at which the oxide will grow as a function of temperature, and we also know the rate at which the pickling acids will remove it. Oxidation is a physical phenomenon dominated by parabolic growth, meaning that as time moves forward, the oxide growth rate slows down, while pickling is assumed to follow linear kinetics. In the finishing line, however, time is not a direct variable, rather the line speed is what the operators can control. So it is better to look at the oxide grade and removal as a function of line speed. The ultimate oxide thickness will be given by the subtraction of these two expressions. Plotting these curves all together allows us to realize the following. The initial speed used in the shop was too fast, not allowing enough time for the acids to do their job, and so the model predicts about 2 microns of remnant oxide, which is indeed why a green coloring still exists at the end of the running processing. 
However, as we can see from the plot, reducing the speed will result in a clean product without the necessary rerun of the code a second time through the finishing line. This project has been a great practical opportunity to help industry with my high temperature acceleration background. I leave you now with the conclusions for your reading. Thank you for your attention.